Hi, my name is Ken Lavico from TwoCarPros.com. I'm here to show you how to replace the front brake pads and rotors of your front wheel drive vehicle. We start by having our car on level ground, in park, with the emergency brake on, and then block the rear wheels to prevent wheel roll. Remove the wheel cover or hubcap. Some cars have wheels that allow you instant access to the lug nuts. The lug nuts are what hold the wheel to the car. Loosen only the lug nuts, no more than one quarter turn. Then jack your car in the manufacturer's recommended position. Anytime you lift the car, use jack stands to support the vehicle. And remember, safety first. Today we are using a garage lift to get a better view of the repair. Once the car has been securely lifted, finish removing the lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Now we need to reset the front brake caliper. What this does is force the brake fluid back into the master cylinder to allow the new brake pads to be installed. Brake fluid is what fills the brake caliper in place of the worn brake pad. I like to use a flat bladed pry bar and wedge it between the brake pad and the brake rotor. Then rock it back and forth as you apply pressure. You don't have to worry about damaging the brake pads or rotor because we're replacing them anyway. After the caliper is fully retracted, loosen the caliper mounting bolts and then remove them. There are several ways of resetting the caliper piston. Once the caliper has been removed, you can use a C-clamp to force the piston back. Next, remove the caliper and set it to the side. Use a tie to secure it, and don't allow the brake caliper to hang on the brake hose. Now remove the brake pads from the caliper mounting plate. Now remove the caliper mounting bracket bolts and then remove the bracket. Next, remove the brake rotors. Sometimes a rotor can be stuck on the hub and may need a hammer to loosen it. Contact the rotor at the mounting hub. So we need to make sure the brake parts you are replacing are exactly the same as the new parts you are installing. Be sure to install any new brake hardware that come with the pads. Now, match the new brake rotor to the old brake rotor. Make sure they're exactly the same. Be sure to clean any oil or coating from the rotor before installation. Now install the new brake rotor. Now reinstall the brake caliper mount. And then tighten. Make sure the caliper mounting bolts are very tight. Now we can install the new brake pads. That's a good fit. Now check the caliper slides. Make sure the bolts slide in and out of the holder smoothly. Now we will use a small amount of brake grease to lubricate the caliper slide. Make sure you do this to both caliper slides before reassembly. Now we'll check the caliper for leaks. The caliper looks pretty dry, so we'll go ahead and reinstall it on the vehicle. If any leaks are present, the caliper will have to be replaced or rebuilt. Now I'll take my pre-lubricated pin slides and reinstall them into the caliper. Now tighten the caliper bolts. And tighten.
Next, we make sure that the brake rotor spins freely. In this case it does. Looks like we've done a pretty good job here. Next, straighten the brake assembly. Reinstall the wheel. And add one lug nut. We start the lug nuts by hand to avoid cross-threading. Tighten lug nuts in a diagonal direction, one across from the other. This will ensure proper fit of the new brake rotor. Now after performing this procedure on the other front wheel, we need to set the brake pads against the rotor, taking up any air gap between the brake pad and the brake rotor. We did not open the brake system, so bleeding is not needed most of the time. We start by pushing the pedal down slowly, and now lifting the pedal slowly. This allows the brake fluid to replace the air gap and return the brake pedal to normal operating position. Servicing your own vehicle saves you money and enlightens you on the operation of your car. For this repair video and more car repair information, please visit our website at twocarpros.com. Thank you for watching. Now after performing this procedure on the other front wheel, we need to set the brake pads against the rotor, taking up any air gap between the brake pad and the rotor. We did not open the brake system, so bleeding is not needed most of the time. Start by pushing the brake pedal down slowly and lifting the pedal slowly. This allows the brake fluid to replace the air gap 
and return the brake pedal to normal operating position. If normal brake pedal operation does not occur, there is a problem and further inspection is needed. And never move a vehicle without proper brake pedal operation.